Wow. Ah. Hmm. I'm a woman of power, of presence, of prosperity, and I boldly speak my word today. This, this, this uh, talk, topic today is higher heights, but I couldn't look at it without seeing highest heights. Let's go fly a kite up to the highest heights, up where the air is clear, up in above the atmosphere. No, I've forgotten the rest of the lyrics, but the highest heights. And really, this that is the, the first point of this message, is that in order for us to connect with that one, Pam's giving me words, but I don't know what they are. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pam's not giving me anything. Okay. In order for us to connect with that presence, which is the absolute creator and manifester of everything, and it is within each one of us. Anyone that heard the wonderful meditation that was here for Reverend Judy's meditation, any, any words that have been spoken here already have already confirmed that the first thing, God, it always starts with the thing itself, God. And that is what is the higher heights. It is that presence. And so, literally, we can look at, are we looking up above the noise, the stuff down there, the trash, or are we looking up into infinite possibilities? I've had some wonderful experiences of looking up. I want to share with you one of the things, since I last saw you in person, not, not Saturday, last Saturday, but last time I saw you that I was speaking to you, I had a, 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 a officiated a wonderful wedding in Vancouver, British Columbia. And it was, it was the most exquisite um, experience of prosperity, of love, of coming together. The couple had been together as a couple for 20 years. They decided to get married because many of their friends that had been together for 20 years were getting divorced. <laughs> they thought they would just do it the other way. And they had, they had very clear ideas of what that meant and why they were doing it. And it was all really beautiful and it was about love. And where they were getting married was at Grouse Mountain, which is a ski resort that's part of Vancouver. And it normally to get there, you have to take a chairlift. But what we did, the bride and groom and me, the officiant of the pilot, took a helicopter ride. My first, it was, it was so wonderful because we could see all of Vancouver, all of the harbor, all of the part of the mountain that we were going up Two. And plus, we could see the wedding. All of the guests for the wedding were there before us. They were supposed to be. And we could wave at them, and they were waving at us. And it felt really wonderful. But now here, it's tell and then we walked over to where I was officiating, where they were going to stand, and uh, everything unfolded perfectly. But in order to get into a helicopter, you have to step up two steps. Now, I think for most pilots and most people of longed legs, it's easy. You just take one foot and then you take the other foot. Well, I couldn't get my other foot up onto the next step. It just, I, I was told the other day I wasn't to say short anymore. So, <laughs> challenged vertically, I guess. <laughs> So anyway, I, I, I couldn't get, so the, so the groom, and I had all of my formal robes on, which you will experience, so including my doctoral hood, the whole thing, you will experience at Reverend Ellis's doctoral ceremony. So it, it's, it was really something, I was really dressed to the T's as 
an officiant, as a spiritual presence, and the groom had to boost me up by the butt because... <laughs> So sometimes it, the highest heights and looking up, you have, to, you have to take the practicality, and I don't want to say anything negative about it, but, you know, I was not going to get up into that thing without his help. <laughs> and so he did, and it, it worked, and, uh, and it was lovely. He, they really wanted it to be just, and they're both teeny tiny um, people. He was dressed in um, uh, his tuxedo, and she was dressed in a dress her mother had worn in what, Grant, 1952, 45 or something? I mean, it was a long time ago. It was, she's Chinese Canadian, and it was a, an Asian gown, it looked exquisite, and it fit her perfectly. It was just, everything about it was beautiful, and it was from that highest heights. But the main point I'm trying to make here is that, yes, literally, we can be at those high heights. Those of you who like to ski, I know when I used to ski, that was one of my favorite things, was to be where no one else was, Reverend Aline took helicopter skiing. I'm so impressed now that I finally take, taken one. But, and to be in that quiet and, and be able to see this panorama of beauty all around you. And oftentimes where I skied at Lake Louise was um, really, there weren't, a lot of, there weren't a lot of crowds. It wasn't like most... Um, U.S. ski resorts that I've been to, it was quiet and big, majestic and lovely. A really great thing to remind us that there were, we're greater than, <laughs> well, that's true too, we're greater than our butts, <laughs> we're greater than our can or I shouldn't or I won't or I have to. The thing within us is timeless, ageless, it's all power. And it's forever creating out of itself with our help, by our direction, by our consciously recognizing it and coming from a place of oneness with it. So look up. You know, when I, was, when I was teaching school, and that was now 100 years ago, I think. It's a while ago. And I taught, um, I taught kids with learning disabilities was the last thing I did. And one of the things that I had learned somewhere along the way is if people are, if people are depressed, get them to look up. Go out for a walk and point out the trees, the things that are up. Why? Because the physical body and mind are connected. We're a oneness, a unity. The physical body and the mind are connected. So when we look up physically, the tendency is to look up spiritually, to look up intellectually, to see the good. So, look up and continue looking up. And no matter what um, may happen, look up. Um, I wanted to tell you this. I wanted to tell you about something I discovered. In my life, I have been married three times, as most of you know. The first two times were to alcoholics, and I, um, I did go to one Al-Anon meeting once with the second husband, and I didn't like it. I thought, what's the use of this? They're not going to help me cure this guy. 
They're not, they're, they seem to be fine, but they all seemed very self-satisfied and happy. And I was very angry <laughs> and frustrated, and I wanted some instructions how to get him to change. He was making my life miserable. Uh-huh. You hear all that victim stuff? None of it's true. None of it's true. But here's the, what I found. My sister, which you all, many of you know, has been struggling with alcoholism for years. And what I didn't realize until I stumbled into the absolute perfect Al-Anon meeting for me is that it's, it's a family disease. It isn't just the alcoholic that has the disease. It's a family disease, so it affects everyone in the family. And everyone in the family, whether they drink or not, is affected by the alcoholism of the alcoholic. It just makes so much sense to me. And I remember when I, when I walked into that meeting, first of all, three people were sort of going in at the same time. I said, are you going to the Al-Anon meeting? Yes, we are. Have you been before? No, it's my first time. They just, it was like I had angels beside me. They just looked after me. They made sure I was comfortable. But here's the main thing. During the meeting, I had an opportunity to speak, because everyone did, but I didn't. I couldn't. Why? Because every time I realized where I was and how lovely all these people were, I started to cry. And I'm not even sure if I knew that was the thought I had. I just felt the feeling of being wrapped in love, being supported and accepted just the way I am and just the way I am not. It was great. And you know when the first time I felt that feeling? Was when I walked into my first New Thought Church, which was in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And it was, I walked into this church, and here is exactly what I did. I sat down. I didn't want anyone to know I was new. I sat down trying to be invisible, which I'd had lots of practice with the alcoholic of, of the past to do that. And um, the minister's husband said a prayer. And it evoked that feeling of oneness. And I started crying. I couldn't control the tears. They just can't keep coming. I know that people have told me that that's been your experience coming to a New Thought Church, coming to this church, this center. But the rest of the story is then I'm listening to the minister is a woman, and I, in my mind, I'm disagreeing with, thing, with everything she says. It's like I had a little checklist of how she was wrong. Everything she was saying about God being within, no, God isn't. Everybody knows God isn't within. Anyway, so I was trying to hold on to those beliefs, but I stayed because what something happened in the prayer because it was a spiritual mind treatment. Something happened. It's a consciousness-changing thing. And then I was going to just make excuses and leave, but then he prayed again. And the same thing happened. The tears came. I couldn't explain it. It wasn't an intellectual choice. It was a feeling I had of being in the right place. So I started coming back. I know that happens here. I know it happens here. Sometimes you'll hear something that the minister or practitioner says, and you think, ugh, that isn't true, or how could anyone believe that? Or, well, I wish she hadn't. <laughs> Dr. J Dr. Jade used to say this was what really got her was, you shouldn't wear that scarf with that dress. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least listen to the message. If you're going to criticize, criticize something that's important. <laughs> the what's being said. So, how do we how do we get to that high heights? How do we get there? Well, 
There's old and new songs that are stairway to heaven, and we know heaven is a state of consciousness. It's within. So how do we get there? How do we get to that beyond the beyond, that place where we're always looking up? Well, one step at a time. One step at a time. Keep coming back. Come, come to service. If you get one nugget out of every service and you come every week, my goodness, you'll be brilliant by the end of the year. <laughs> and you may or may not be brilliant, brilliant, but in your mind, but you will be changed. You'll be changed. And it's a change for the good. It's a good change. I love this community. I love... <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want to say something about the community itself. Dr. Jim Lockhart wrote a book called The Beloved Community, and for one of our years, our board of trustees went through it um, chapter by chapter, reading it aloud together and talking about whether we were in agreement with what he was saying or not. It was a really great spiritual practice. Which, by the way, the Board of Trustees has the fiduciary responsibility, but they have to be spiritual first. Before they make any decisions, it has to be based on truth, on the, the, the law, the way things really work. So, okay. But I wanted to say more about this community. First of all, the groom is actually a friend of this center. Not only did he and his bride-to-be attend every time they came to Grant and Rita's, which was about three times a year. When we bought this building, we were paying too much property tax. And he is a tax expert, consultant, for his business, that's what he does. So he came and he evaluated and he went to the, the I guess, county, I think, and he changed, got them to change that tax rate to where it, was, it's where it was supposed to be. So someone that isn't here today has made a huge difference for this center. The empty chairs around you have once been filled with other people who've made a difference. And some of them are on their way back. And some of them, like like Aiden and our beloved and our beloved Dina and our beloved so many have made a transition that they're not going to physically come back. But they might be sending some people. I always, you know, that was one of the things that Dina and Lee, but mostly Dina did. Every week when I first started, she'd come with friends. She'd say, oh, you've got to come to my church or my center, whatever she called it. You'll love our minister. It's the greatest place. She'd bring five, ten. It was just a gift to us. So think about the people in your life that you might be encouraged to invite. Beloved community. It, is, it was here before we moved here. When we were, well... Our history, most of you know, we moved from San Juan Capistrano after being there for 39 years, I think. But before that, we were, we were chartered here in San Clemente. This was our original home. And then this place showed up. So wherever the next place is, you take all of that with you with us. I need a home to come back to. It isn't a building. 
I need a home. It isn't a building. Since I got here, I got here on the Friday before the 15th, so I, I guess that would make it the 14th. <laughs> Gosh, I'm good at math. <laughs> Not Alice. <laughs> so much better. So <clears throat> I got here, and I came because I wanted to come to June's birthday party. What an event. What an event of love, of celebration of lightness, of truth. This community, I know Reverend Judy organized it, but th and it was held here. And when I looked out, wow, all of these beloveds were somehow connected to June. And when you get to be 100, I guess it should look that way. But I think for many of us, Our heart is three sizes too small. And so we don't expand out and let other people get to know us and get to know other people. What you're doing on Sunday, your Sunday practice is so important, but it's not all of your practice. It's not the only thing you do spiritually, but it's an important thing. You know, I, I, just want, I just want to say one more word of encouragement. Dr. Alice is going to be um, officially presented her doctorate of religious science, science of mind. It is the biggest honor a minister can receive. And I really hope you will set that day aside, make arrangements to go to it, to come, to be part of the who she looks out at when she sees all of her community in support of her. It's a very important thing, and Center for Spiritual Living, Capistrano Valley, that used to be the Church of Religious Science, has been blessed because all three of your ministers have been awarded that doctoral. It is an honor. Not every minister receives a doctorate. You probably thought we all did. In fact, I know that Bill Hart used to say to me, well, when are you going to be Dr. Heather? And I said, well, when the organization sees fit to bestow me with that honor. But he, would, he, he was ready and... Um, and I'm really glad he, he was here for it. And I'm so grateful that Alice is here. Reverend Dr. Alice, growing this community as she grows herself even deeper. Uh, I was her spiritual self, deeper, wider, more breadth that we have as we minister. So, how do you get the highest height? Flying that kite, flying that kite up in the purest air, you look up. Keep looking up. Look up, see the good. Call it forth if you can't see it around you. Tell yourself, as Emma Curtis Hopkins did, there's good for me, and I ought to have it. Let's say that together. There is good for me, and I ought to have it. And you do have it. And you do have it. As soon as you've claimed it, it starts coming. But you have to start seeing it all as good. So is the prosperity consciousness just all about millions and billions? of money? No. It, cer it certainly can include that. But what a prosperity consciousness is, is about the millions of ideas that come forth from that presence that inspires a spark 
in someone else. So it's not the prosperity that I have to bestow on another. It's the prosperity I call forth by who I am. What I know is the higher heights are the highest heights. Here and now, in this very room, in this beloved community, and so it is. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And now I'm going to pray. In this holy moment of right now, I recognize and know that there is only one power, one presence, one life. It's the thing itself, and I do call it God, and that works for me. But it has no, it, it doesn't care. It doesn't have an ego. It doesn't care if you call it Frank or Lloyd or George. It doesn't care if you call it divine mind, if you call it the thing itself. It is that one power that brings forth everything in the manifest universe, everything that is growing, every conscious being is brought forth that same way and all of the good that prosperity brings comes that same way. I name it, I claim it, I say yes to it. I say thanks for it. And so what I know is that the higher heights are here today, each one in this community, feeling the joy and the presence within him or herself. And I know that good is for all and for all time. And I know that the growing, changing, evolving community may look different, but it is based on this one principle. There is one life. That life is God's life. That life is my life now. And knowing that that is the principle, I am so very grateful. I am grateful for knowing what I know. I'm grateful for being with like-minded people. I'm grateful for accepting and knowing the truth, for the truth has and does set me free with my heart filled with gratitude, knowing it's all good, because it's all God. I release this word and say with me if you're in agreement, and so it is. Thank you.